Thank you very much. What a pleasure to be here tonight. And it's so great to see so many wonderful friends here, too, and some of my students. So for those people who've taken my classes before, there's going to be a test after the lecture tonight. <laughs> and feel free to join in if you'd like to you take that test. Um, I have been interested in the Grand Canyon since the introduction said since 1975. I lived at the bottom for three years, and that's where I got all these rocks in my head. And I went to Northern Arizona University and studied geology in a formal way, and actually did my master's thesis at a volcano that's very close to here, House Mountain. And that was a wonderful project to make a geologic map of House Mountain. I just love that mountain. I know a lot of you have hiked there. Uh, I still love the Grand Canyon a lot, and that's going to be the topic of tonight's lecture. And this is really kind of a neat time to be talking about the origin of the Grand Canyon, because just in February, a very controversial scientific paper was published, and maybe you read about it in the newspapers. NPR picked up on it, and Science Friday, and it was uh, picked up by the AP. And some workers who are colleagues of mine had done some studies in the western part of the Grand Canyon, and looked at the way that cave formations had formed inside the Grand Canyon. And believe it or not, they came up with the idea that parts of the Grand Canyon could be 17 million years old. Well, you thought that they would have said that the canyon could have been 17 months old, the way that some other geologists decided that that wasn't a good idea. And they tried to squash the idea right away that the canyon could be 17 million years old. So tonight, you are going to hear a few things about how the Grand Canyon may be a little bit older than we sometimes think, and maybe that parts of it have formed at different times. That's how big the Grand Canyon is. It could be that some parts of it are different ages than others. Now, if you go up to the National Park, and you, you look through the brochure that you get at the front gate, it will tell you that the canyon is between 5 and 6 million years old. That is the date that we ascribe to the Colorado River as we see it today. But let me just ask you, what are the chances that no part of the Grand Canyon or no part of the Colorado River were in existence prior to that January 1st day, six million years ago? <laughs> the chances are not very good. So when we give the date of six million years for the age of the Grand Canyon, what we're really talking about is when the river came into its existence exactly as we see it today, and it started to cut the canyon exactly as we see it today. I'll tell you right up front, my bias is that I think that parts of the Grand Canyon formed at an earlier time. So you might be able to pick up on that when you're listening to the lecture. If we were to see this lecture given by five or six other geologists, you would listen to five or six other lectures. Because the canyon is so big, there's so many things to talk about. But this is my version of it. And if, you, if you'd like to to read about it when you leave here, I'd be happy to sign a book for you at the end, personally. That would be my pleasure. Now, a lot of times when I give this lecture, people will come up to me afterwards and they will say, that was great, Wayne, but I will never remember any of it. <laughs> and it's not important that you remember everything that I'm going to tell you tonight. It's going to move pretty fast. There's going to be lots of wonderful images, thanks to Brandon and his friend on the cell phone there. There's going to be lots of images, but don't feel like you need to leave here giving a coherent story yourself about how the canyon formed. Think about it. When you go to the movie theater, uh, tonight you might go see the new Batman movie, would you remember every single part of the movie? Would you be able to tell somebody sequentially in every single part of that movie? But no, you're going to remember four or five major things. And that's all that uh, I can ask you tonight. Is don't, don't feel like you need to know it all when you leave here. And maybe while you're watching it, instead of saying, my God, this is so much, you might not say that. You might just say something like, this is interesting, I'm going to listen more. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to have to stand back here at the computer, but I think my voice carries, especially with this microphone. And so I've titled the lecture, Carving Grand Canyon. That's the the name of the book as well. And is there anybody in the audience tonight who has never seen the Grand Canyon in person? No. A lot of times when I do trips, about half the hands will go up, sometimes even more. But uh, I assume that most of you live close to here or are traveling through, you will go to the Grand Canyon. So when most people go to the canyon, they probably say to themselves, I wonder how this thing formed. And you can see people a lot of times looking down into the Grand Canyon 
And I'm amazed sometimes, people who've never even taken a geology class will oftentimes ask themselves, I wonder how it got here, I wonder how old it is. Well, if there is one thing that we could say about the Grand Canyon, is that the Colorado River is responsible for the Grand Canyon. And here you see the Colorado River as it's approaching Desert View, way back there on the rim. So when we talk about the age of the Grand Canyon, we're also talking about the age of the river. One leads to the other. Now don't be mistaken, at uh, the, the South Rim when you're at the El Javar Hotel, it's 10 miles across to the North Rim Hotel. That doesn't mean that the river used to be 10 miles wide. Because what the river, through its history, has probably always been as wide as you see in this photograph right here. And that's about 300 feet. As the river chisels its way down through the many layers, then the top layers are exposed to the other elements of erosion, and they start to run in towards the river. So the canyon is like a, a V shape, and that's because the layers at the top were cut first. Still, even knowing that the Colorado River is responsible for the Grand Canyon, there's still lots of mystery associated with the canyon. We don't know a lot of things about the specific details of the history. And so that's what geologists are doing. They're constantly trying to find out some of these details for how the Grand Canyon formed. You know, if you go to some of our other nation's national parks, like Grand Teton on the left there, or Yellowstone on the right, the geologic story is a little more known. It's not as mysterious as the Grand Canyon. And we know that that mountain range in the Tetons there was only uplifted from the plain about 10 million years ago. And then beginning 2 million years ago, glaciers started to eat away at that uplifted block to create those spectacular mountains. We know that beginning about 2 million years ago, the Yellowstone area became active volcanically. And there's been many volcanic eruptions since then. And here you see Yellowstone Falls pouring over some of those volcanic rocks. But the Grand Canyon story is very, very much still shrouded in haze mystery. So there's still some problems that geologists uh, feel are related to the Grand Canyon origin. Here I've listed five of them. What is the age of the river in the canyon? Is it old versus young? Why does the river turn into an elevated plateau instead of going around it? The river seems to ignore the falls. There's an idea that the river, when it started out, went the other way. That's a, a great thing to think about. And the last thing is that the canyon is set upon a very mature landscape. So when we think about that first problem, what is the age of the river in the canyon? There are some geologists who believe that the Grand Canyon might be 70 million years old. I know two geologists personally who ascribe that age for the Grand Canyon. And one of those two thought that 70 million years ago it looked just like it does today. Now he's kind of out there on the fringe, and uh, not a lot of people would agree with that, but I'm just giving you the extremes. And then the young age would be five to six million years. Thank you. Five to six million years for that. And again, as I told you, that is certainly the age of the river as we see it today. Why does the river flow into the uplifted plateau? And on this diagram right here, you can see that green sausage on the right-hand side. And look at how the river coming down out of the top makes a 90-degree turn and goes into that forested plateau. Why is it that the river does that? Why didn't it go around that uplifted area? Why does the river ignore the fault lines? Now, this is a diagram from the book Carving Grand Canyon. You can see the major faults there. And those major faults are in red. And look at how the river just runs across them. You know, right here in Sedona, Oak Creek follows the Oak Creek Canyon Fault. And that's very typical for streams to do. When a fault line is in the landscape, it's a zone of weakness. The idea that the river used to flow the other way. Here you can see one of these paleogeographic maps from a long time ago that shows an uplift near Las Vegas and Kingman. And those black arrows are meant to show that the river used to go the other way. Now I'm going to show you some much more modern uh, arrows that, and maps that will show this much more clearly. And lastly, why is it that such a deep landform is placed on a flat, featureless terrain? And here I was flying on a jet, and we could see the Grand Canyon as we were landing at Grand Canyon Airport. Just look at this relationship between this very, very deeply dissected landscape, and then notice the flat rim. 
And if you do pick up the book tonight, or if you read the book, I've got a little bit of a story in there about why this is one of the most interesting things about the Grand Canyon. A lot of people, before they go to the canyon, they think that it must be out in the desert somewhere, or they think that it might be in the Rocky Mountains. But no, it's here in the 